<laughs> I think it's interesting to see how God has provided through these difficult times. Um, I know that you know we've been able to pay our bills and do the things that we've needed to do so far, although we do pray that God will just keep blessing us and let us keep doing what we need to be doing for the community and to get the word out there. So, All right, so it is definitely a good place to be this morning. I'm so glad to see so many faces back that we haven't seen in a while. So who would like to start off the morning with a testimony or a song? I thought Doug was going to say it. I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stand and say that uh, I'm glad to be back. And I appreciate the prayers while I was out. And, uh, and it is true, you know, you, you just don't realize what you miss yep. until you just can't be, a, be here. And uh, I'm just glad that the Lord gave me a very mild case of this crazy virus and then Nobody else got sick, and I just thank him for that. And I, I love the Lord, and I'm glad I'm saved. I love that. It's good to see all the kids here, too, this morning. I think they all oh, oh. <laughs> have got them rolling in the aisle. Sarah, I'll stand and say I love the Lord this morning. I'm glad to be in church. I'm glad to see other people uh, come back. And, uh, and I told uh, Jan this morning, I said, well, I think as of just a couple of days ago, I think all of our shirts, I don't know of anyone connected to our shirts who has COVID or, or even on uh, lockdown quarantine. because of the quarantine because of it. So uh, glad for that. Praise the Lord for that. I know that uh, a lot of people have had this COVID and not turned out so good to them before, but uh, God has blessed and took care of us. So praise you for it. said she appreciated Jacob the new. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we do appreciate our online people too. Um, so we have a bigger family. I say that every week. We have a bigger family than what we even know that we have. So it's good to have people that are listening if they can't be here with us physically. All right, All right. anybody else have a song? Patty? <laughs> Thankful that the Lord 
gave us the opportunity to be back in his house, and uh, good to see so many out this morning. Amen. Smiling faces. I mean, we love the Lord, and we want to do what we can to serve mm -hmm. him. And
All right, anybody else have a testimony or some? Looks like we've got someone else tuned in this morning. <laughs> oh, Candy Cruz, that's mine. Oh, and uh, Diana Sorbo. <laughs> so yeah, it's good to have you guys here with us this morning. <coughs> Well, Jan, are you ready to lead some worship songs with us this morning? All right, as she comes this morning, why don't we, if you have the ability, let's stand so that we can sing loud and... Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord. I've got my brother Gary here. My sister Candy's online. I've got a cousin online. And it's just it's almost like a family reunion and stuff. But I thank God that uh, 
were able to be here this morning when they first called out. You know, they said this maybe some stuff on Saturday night, and I thought, Lord, I at least want to get to church on Sunday if we can, and then hopefully, you know, it won't get the stuff it looks like we probably will, but at least to be able to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and it's good to have Amy and them back. I always, always watch when I'm playing the piano to see if they're coming in, and uh, you know, it's been, I think, over a month that they were quarantined off and on and stuff, and just to have them here, it means a lot to me that they made it through the sicknesses that they had, and uh, God gave, brought them through that, and I think we've had our, have our highest number today that we've had in months, I think, because of everything, and I thank the Lord for that. Not too soon. <laughs> yeah, not too soon. <laughs> the one that definitely leave a legacy. I think it's good to have people in our lives Amen. that we just know without a shadow of a doubt that they love the Lord and that they serve Him with every fiber of their being. So <laughs> I hope I'm one of those people, and I, I think that's probably that's something we all desire to be. So, <laughs> all right. Anybody else have a testimony or something? Well, before Bob gets up, I just want to share something that God did for me this week. Um, I was sitting down to do my normal Bible reading that I do pretty much every morning, and as I opened the Bible, I was going to my place where I'd been reading through, which was in the New Testament, and my Bible weirdly opened to the book of Judges, and there's no way that it could have opened that way, because I opened it this way, but <laughs> anyways, it opened to the book of Judges, and my mind, or my eyes caught the, a little profile of Gideon, and I just went to turn back to my normal place, and I felt the Spirit say, no, read that. <laughs> so I read the, the little, um, oh, my eyes. <laughs> I read the little profile of Gideon, and, and then I started to read the story of Gideon again, and that's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And uh, what I loved about it so much was that Gideon was completely on call, like was completely uh, not prepared for what God called him to do. He called him to be a, a great warrior and a great leader, um, and he said, wait, do you know who I am? Are you, are you called the right person? Mm -hmm. Must be that other Gideon way over there. <laughs> and God said, listen, you're going to be great because I'm the one who sent you. Amen. And so that just helped me a lot in my personal life with some stuff I'm going through. Um, if God sends you, he'll make a way. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, guys. She said that when she was playing, she was um, playing at Jesus. She said, I, had, I made a little cross. And she said, and, and she said, and Jesus was on the cross. She said, but then he went to the tomb and he rose again. <laughs> and so I love to hear that. And Jacob does the same thing anytime he sees a cross. He says, that's where Jesus was. And then I would say, but? And he said, then he only rose. <laughs> so I'm glad to know that our kids are gaining uh, an understanding of who Jesus is and how much he loves us, even when we don't feel like maybe they're listening. They're listening. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have anything to share? 
um, kind of what Amy said. I that spoke to me when she said that because I've learned over the past couple months. I struggle a lot. I don't have a lot of people my age that I talk to or hang out with, especially family or older Christian couples or just you know. I find myself not ever associating with the same crowd, but I've learned that it's not about the age of the person you are friends with. It's about the wisdom and just how people speak and talk. You know, you learn a lot. So I just learned that I'm not great with people my age, but that's okay because all the people I'm around are good role models for my kids, yep. so I just appreciate that. That's right. Yeah. I'm not good with people my age, sure. so you're good. <laughs> all right. All right, well, it's good to have Bob here. <laughs> This message is one that may be a, considered a scary message to preach about Valentine's Day. <laughs> Very rarely we get to be in church on Valentine's Day, but it worked out this year. And studying and I was searching, and I had a couple ideas, and I kind of ran them down, and they didn't work out. I went to another, and finally, it seemed like the Holy Spirit just prompted me and said, that It's Valentine's Day. So, so what? Uh, yeah. So, uh, anyhow. I feel like the Lord has given me something for this day special. And before I begin, I'll ask some simple questions. As, and uh, you don't have to raise your hand or answer audibly anyway, but have you done anything special for that person you love on Valentine's Day today? Have you done anything special? Well, I hope you have. I'm sure you have. Some of you have. Valentine's Day has is a, is a, been around for a long time. If you do the uh, study on it, the history of it, it takes you clear back as five, six, seven hundred years ago. And there's several people that uh, makes claims to be in the person who started Valentine's Day, but somehow or another it got started at St. Valentine. There are several different stories, traditions that, that went about, but it all brought about this thing that where we look at someone that's in our life that uh, originally was about romantic love from a husband and a wife, wife to a husband type thing, boyfriend and girlfriend back and forth. And, but it's kind of bridged over into just anybody that you love and for any reason kids you love to be involved in, schools all uh, cranked up in it, and they all do it, and they all have a good time with it. But it's a great thing to have a holiday where we really take a close look at what love really should look like in our lives. The love we have for each other, the love we have for our God. So turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, if you will, and we'll see what we can come up with out of this. Try to stay safe. This is a risky message to preach today. I'm up for it, too. Hope you all are up for it. When you find Ephesians chapter 5, you can stand, if you will, for the reading of God's Word today. Ephesians chapter 5. As we read the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote to the different churches of that day, he spent a lot of time... Uh, really precisely teaching them things that he felt like they needed instruction on. And those same teachings uh, transfer right over to us today so we can apply them to our life today. Let's bow our head before we begin. Let's uh, ask Doug to go pray for the Word today. Thank you, Andy, for allowing us back in your house today on this special day. And pray with Pastor Bob that you have much as needed by us here in the congregation. So pray with you care for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And we'll pick it up in the, kind of the middle of this chapter, so we, there's a lot that has been said prior to this. You see the word wherefore in verse 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So that's, a, that's a great statement right there itself. Just don't be foolish about life. Try to figure out what God wants in your life. Be not, uh, be understanding of what the will of God is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. We've been doing that already today, haven't we? Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've done some of that today. Now let's, let's get into the part of, of how we deal with other people. And it says in verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now that word submitting, we're going to talk uh, some about that today. Because it's included in the rest of our text today. Verse 22 says, Wives, now when we, Joyce and I are studying this chapter sometimes, she'll say, well, let's just skip over that verse there. <laughs> she said, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, and even as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to the Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now the husband's responsibility. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife, see that she reverenced her husband. May be seen. We start off in verse 22, and a lot of people have taken this verse out of context when it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So when we think of the word submission, some people get the idea the word submission means that whatever somebody tells you to do, if you're being in submission to that person, you do everything they tell you no matter what you feel about it and what the situation is. But you got to look back at the beginning of the text, what I read to you. First, it describes the, the condition that we should be in our own spirit. It says we ought to be trying to understand what the will of the Lord is. We ought to be walking in His will. We ought to be singing songs. We ought to be giving thanks. We ought to be that kind of person. And then when that kind of person is in play, then when you say that the wives should submit to their husbands, it's talking about that kind of a husband. Now, there's a lot of husbands out there that are ungodly men. Sometimes there's a godly wife living with an ungodly man. I don't think the Bible ever tells that person to have to submit to everything that that man may, may come up with. doesn't mean that a woman is a slave. doesn't mean that in any context whatsoever. But it does mean that there is a, a place of submission. There's a place of acknowledging where the man is. Now, of course, the Bible tells us very clearly that the man is the head of the household, the head of the wife, and he has to be, they have to be in any organization, they have to be somebody who is in charge, so to speak, because everybody can't be in charge, and you can't have it going your your household or any organization, you have it going 10 different ways, there have to be somebody that's in charge. Now, sometimes that seems like that's the good place to be, but I can tell you ahead of times I've been in charge of a lot of things, and that's usually the worst place to be. Because anything that goes wrong, guess whose fault it is? It's my fault. So, you know, if you're taking charge of something, you may think that's good. I can just make it go up my way and I can get my way with everything. I can run the way I want to. Not always the case. Not always doesn't work that way. But the, God has made it in such that man has been the aggressor, you might say. Man is the one that steps his foot forward. Most of the time in normal relationships, if you think back when... Uh, you and your spouse before long before you was married when you first start dating who asked who out on a date I hope it was the, the male asked the female out that's kind of the way it should work out it doesn't always work that way nowadays but it should work that way it's the way it was way back in the days when I was dating that's a long time ago isn't it? so I I never forget when I first uh, met Joyce and uh, and we uh, was working at the same place and we was kind of uh, kind of checking each other out and running each other over West Sheen, riding around and uh, rode around and the next thing you know I was asking her out for a date because I found there was some chemistry there that I, that I hadn't experienced with any other person at that time. And there was something that drew me to her and evidently something that drew her to me and, and eventually that came to pass that we became man and wife. So that's the way it works. So for you that are young and not married, I want you to understand that as you go along with life, you may take a look at a lot of different people. You may look at a lot of people and think, well, I'd like them to be my boyfriend or my girlfriend, and that's, that's okay. But you, when you know that the right person comes along, God has this way of putting people together. And many times it's people that's uh, totally opposite people, and that's how God puts them together because God makes them one place. So he takes one particular uh, set of characteristics and then he takes another set of characteristics and put them together and when they're together they make something better than either one of them is by themselves. Y'all can say amen to that. Amen. 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 I hope that you as uh, talking to wives right now, I hope that you as wives, I hope that you add something to your the marriage that really makes your, your uh, husband 
uh, feel special, makes him feel like he's valuable, makes him feel like he's capable of doing things and encourage him in things. And I hope as the husbands, and now we're going to get into this part, it says that uh, uh, down in verse 25, the husbands love your wives. So it tells the husbands that their, their, their responsibility is to love their wives. Now, to love somebody means that you take great responsibility for that person. Amen? You love your children. You make sure they have plenty to eat. You make sure they have warm clothes to wear in the wintertime. You make sure that they got a cold, they got something going on, and you take care of their physical needs in every way because you love them. You take responsibility of them. Now, you know, that's exactly what men should be. Now, you know, it's not that seem like the nature of a man to get too much into romantic love. Amen? You see, I grew up in a household, and I've told you all this before, I grew up in a household that I never heard my parents, or I never heard my sisters, or anybody in my house ever say the words, I love you. It wasn't part of our, our doing. We, we showed it in every way. We done all the things that you would do when you love people. It just wasn't words we used. It wasn't common. So when I, I came across Joyce and we got married and she liked to use those words, I love you, and I, I liked to hear it. And it took me a little while to get used to it, but then it took me a while to understand how I could really show my wife how I loved her. And this is a day that you get an opportunity, if you're a husband, you get to show your wife how you love her. Now you may get her a flower, you may get her a box of candy if she's not on a diet. And you may get her uh, maybe a Valentine. You may get kind of a silly one, kind of a childish one, you know, and sometimes that's a good thing. A lot of things you can do. And, of course, the wives, they try to return the favor. They have a tougher time because, you know, what do you buy your husband that, he, that, she, that says, I love you? You know, you, of course, you can give him candy, but he, he probably don't need that either. But uh, so it's a kind of a challenge sometimes. But it's an opportunity to kind of, it's kind of a reset as you go along in life, many times we go along in life, we just get kind of used to each other. And if you're not careful, I've been guilty myself. Joyce and I, here she's amen and be back there, probably she can hear me. I've been guilty of just getting busy in, the, in life and just getting busy taking care of things and working and doing this and making sure all this is done and then not really take time to nurture the relationship with my wife that I should. And it takes sometimes a little while before maybe she'll kind of remind me, when was the last time that we just had a date and went out and, and just done nothing but went out with me and you. And I'll say, well, I didn't think it's been that long. And she'll say, well, I, I can tell you how long it's been. And then she'll tell me sometimes. Makes me think of James Dobson. He, I got an email from him this week, and I thought it was really good. He, uh, he said when he first got married, he said that he was five months after he got married when Valentine's Day came along, and he was a little bit like me. He wasn't too sentimental about things like that. So he was at college, he was in college, and he was going through a bunch of books and writing a paper, and he was busy, busy. He never even had a clue that it was Valentine's Day. So he comes home about 10 o'clock and says when he comes in his apartment, he's expecting a greeting from his wife, and she was already in bed. And he goes in the kitchen, and here's a, a setting of candles and, and little long stem goblets and, and some uh, food that had just been partially eaten, and uh, and the candles half burned down, and, and his wife was in bed and wasn't happy. And uh, so he said he didn't have a clue what was wrong until he saw this little heart laid on the table, and he realized, uh oh, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> How many guys here ever missed a special day of birthday or Valentine's Day? Missed it? Come on, own up to it now. You surely missed one before, and should have done something, just didn't get it done. I have. I have because I've got too busy before. Glad I, I'm glad I'm kind of past that some. I do better now. I hope George will say amen to that. But it's an opportunity to kind of reset and let your spouse know how much you love them. It's a great time for my grandkids to come and carry me little gifts, things they picked out special for me and made me feel special that they did that for me. And I get to give them something today, sometime today, that makes me feel special. It's good to be loved, isn't it? It's good to love each other. We all have a desire to have that kind of a special love. You know, sometimes we look at people and, and couples and there's so much in love and it's so obvious there's so much in love and, and we kind of uh, feel left out that we don't have that kind of relationship, but that's totally up to us to build that kind of relationship. God desires we have that kind of relationship. It's up to Him. So we go down through the Scripture and we'll take a look at some, some of the rest of the Scripture. It says, Husbands, love your wife and and he adds on this, and this is really a big part. He says, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. 
So you love your wife in such a degree as much as what Christ loved the church. Now what did Christ do for the church? He died for the church. He gave his life for mankind, for the sins of mankind, for the church in respect. So I guess we could ask the question to you husbands today. If he was in a situation in some scenario, and say for example, you were standing beside your wife and you saw a car coming wide open and she did not see it and you knew if you been over to shove her out of the way and out of harm's way, you would fall into the path of that car. Would you do that? You guys are awful soft. I, tell you. I hope you can say, yes, I believe I would. I think I would be willing to die for my wife, to save her life. I'd be willing to give mine. That's what Christ did for us. So we think about Valentine's Day, we think about this relationship between husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends and People love each other. That's a great time. But think about what Christ did for us. He didn't hesitate. Now, yeah, he did go to the garden. He did pray. He spent time. But he, he sought God's will. When he knew it was God's perfect will, that he died on a cross, he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, he went to that cross, and hung there, and died, and gave his life up for us, that we may have salvation, we may be saved. That's great news. That's good news. So he says, you know, Christ gave himself for the church. That he might sanctify it, cleanse it with the washing of water of the word, he might present it to himself, the glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. So now he's telling you, you should love your wife as much as Christ loved the church. So that's pretty maximum love. That's just a love, that, a higher plane of love. But he says, now you should love your wife more than you love your own body. Now, it goes on to tell us that we all love our bodies. Everybody loves our bodies. We feed our bodies. We take care of our bodies. We, we take care of ourselves when we're sick. And we should love our wives as much as that or more than that. Because you see, when two people are married, they become one. Now, nowadays, that's not very, very popular. But that's what the Bible tells us down in verse 31. So, for this call shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. I don't know if they've taken out of the marriage vows now or not, but that used to be pretty common in marriage vows where two come together and becomes one. It's a beautiful thing that God has put together. But you know, the devil is so much after destroying that, and he's, he's successful at times. And he's only successful when we let him be. It's up to us to, teach, to maintain our, our relationship, our love relationship with our spouse, our love relationship with our family, our love relationship with our God. It's up to us to take care of that. We have to deal with that. We have to, we have to be able to acknowledge and be able to see when it's getting in trouble, when it's having an issue. We have to be honest, be able to just own up to it if it's our fault or if it's someone else's fault. We need to be able to approach them in such a way that we show them how much we need their love, we need them to care for us. So God has, has made it possible for this love to flow from one to another. Love's a very beautiful thing. I noticed in this scripture I read to you, I think there's four times it makes mentions, makes mention of, of husbands loving their wives. So I think that the reason Paul said it four times because sometimes it's hard to get through to men's heads amen. how important it is. Amen. Joyce, you can calm down the amen now. <clears throat> how important it is to love your wife and to show her that you love her. Amen. Amen. I never forget Joyce and I was counseling with a, a couple one time, and it's, I'll tell this, it's kind of funny in a way. It's sad, but it's kind of funny. But uh, this one particular guy, he was having a struggle really expressing his love to his wife. And we just recommend that maybe it's a good time right then just to tell her that you love her. And it took quite a bit, but he finally got the job done. He finally, finally said what he needed to say. But it was a struggle. It's tough for him to say that. Because you know, when you say that, you really are taking on a lot of responsibility when you say that, when you really mean it. It says in verse uh, 33, kind of sums it up. So, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. So he says, don't, don't miss what I'm saying. Love your wife as much as you love yourself, even more. And the wife, see that she reverence her husband. So that's the wife's responsibility. It shows the husband's responsibility. So both of these are a type of Christ and the church. Christ loved the church so much he died for it. We were to love him to the everything we got with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul. Love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what I like everybody else. That's mankind. We love everybody else. 
Bible tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse 34, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Most of Valentine's Day's uh, uh, readings are uh, have a heart on them somewhere or another. And, and all your Valentine's cards has a heart on them. Of course, most of the flowers will have a heart on them some way. But it says, For your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if you treasure, and we'll, we'll put that in context today, we'll treasure your love for all those people that's in your family and your life. And you love them, it ought to be your treasure. But you know, Jesus Christ ought to be the treasure of your life. That's where your heart ought to be. You get your heart right with Him, and all other love relationships work out so much better. Amen? I really don't think you can truly love anyone like you could uh, love them once you know the Lord. As an unsaved person, I think you would struggle loving the way God really wants you to love. Because you see, all love comes from God. It comes from Him. So you don't really have much to hand out if you don't know Him. Mm -hmm. He just has kind of second-hand stuff. But you know, once you come to know Him and settle it in your heart that you want Him to be Lord of your life, then He goes to the door for you to be able to love everybody else in the way that God wants you to love everybody. Colossians 3, verse 17 and 18 also has something along the same line to say. It says, Whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him, and here's, once again, wives, submit yourselves and your own husbands as it is fit for the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Of course, these husbands have never been bitter with your wife. Have you? never been guilty of that. If you have, you're not supposed to be. Amen? All right, let's all bow our head for just a minute. Ask God to help us a little. Thank you for what you need to us. Please pray at this time of invitation that you'll just come for someone here that has a need. We pray that you'll just help them to Come, get that knee taken care of. Let's all stand if you will. I'm like everybody else that's been up here talking and, and making mention of the congregation being larger than what we're used to for a while. We've been kind of running a skeleton crew for a while, but I'm so thrilled to see people back, to, to see Gary's family back, to see Amy and her family back, to Janet's back. Just several of the back with us that wasn't able to come. But uh, you're here today, and it's not by chance you're here. So let's bow our heads in just a minute. If somebody here has a need to pray, you might just be honest in your heart and say, Well, I, I really uh, know this message you preached. I know there's something in that for me, and I need to be better at really loving the people around me. I need some help there. So just come and ask God to help you to be the loving person you need that He wants you to be. Just come in and ask Him for whatever you have need of. We won't gather around and get close to you and, and violate our social distancing, but we will pray for you if you want to come and pray. Anybody has a need today? You might need to pray for any reason today. All right, so you may be seated for just a moment. We'll give a couple of announcements and we'll just